And we're going to take, the, our crew today is going to take the opportunity to also recognize all the other, or as many of the other team members as we can today. This is, you heard it before, it's a team effort, and the reason you've heard it a number of times is because it really is a team effort. It's just, it's not about seven crew members, it's about the whole team that, that got us uh, to space and brought us back home safely and continue to keep the space station crew up there uh, safe on orbit while they're getting some really good work done. Uh, we can't possibly thank everybody. We'd be here hours and hours, but we're going to try and, and highlight uh, some of the few folks who really touched us closely on this particular mission. Before I do that, though, let me add a personal thanks from me to my crew, to our crew. Uh, these guys were phenomenal. I couldn't pick better folks to work with ever again than these, these guys right here on this stage. These are phenomenal, phenomenal crew members. In, in order, our pilot Tony Antonelli, certainly the best of the best. I could not ask for a better help sitting in the right seat than Tony provided the entire mission. In, entire, in addition to just being a, a, the pilot with the normal pilot duties on the crew, Tony was also our, uh, leading our airlock operations to uh, safely get our, our EVA crew uh, in their suits, out the door, and brought them back in safely and got them back uh, reconfigured and, and prepared the airlock for the next day's uh, EVA. So uh, that was a big responsibility on someone who hasn't flown yet, and then he did it with the, with the, the experience of a real pro. To Tony's left is Mission Specialist 1, Joe Acaba. Joe's on his uh, first mission, came here in the class of 2004. Uh, Joe uh, was not one of the guys in charge of any one particular unit, but he was involved in about every area of the flight. He was a flight deck uh, mission specialist for both the Aston entry. He did a little work on the uh, space uh, shuttle robotic arm, and he also was part of our three-man EVA team. Uh, he, was, he was our jack of all trades. He was involved with everything, and for a first-time uh, crew member, the guy took it all in and, and made it look very easy, as Mr. Coates said. So he, uh, he was a, 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 just a great crew member. Swanee to his left. Swanee and I flew together on our first mission a couple of years ago in STS-117. And there is not one person in the world that I would have rather been crewed up with again than, than Steve Swanson, particularly to lead the EVA operations. He was our lead EVA crew member and just as, as good as it gets. Swanee is a, did a phenomenal job preparing for this mission and uh, really running the entire EVA, uh, the, the, the flight, EVA flight team. Uh, again, I couldn't have picked a better guy, or I didn't pick him, but I was so glad I got him. <laughs> but uh, I couldn't have imagined picking a better guy than Steve Swanson. In addition to that, by the way, he was our mission specialist number two, flight tech engineer, and just does that, makes it look phenomenally easy every day. So, Swanee, great job. Swanee's left is Ricky Arnold, uh, another first-time guy. Came here with Joe in class of 2004. Uh, Swan, uh, Ricky was Swanee's right-hand man with the EVA operations. Uh, uh, went out the door on two uh, very, very exciting EVAs. The first one uh, with uh, helping Steve Swanson install the S6 truss. Uh, he just did that, uh, again, very, very methodically and, ma again, making the job look easy. And then on his second EVA, went out in the lead EVA role on that mission. For, so for a guy who went out, was on his first mission to go out the door as the lead EVA guy on a two-man crew, not only his second EVA, wow, great job, Ricky. To Ricky's left is uh, our mission specialist for John Phillips, the elder statesman of the crew. John, John was our most ex by far our most experienced crew member. He, was a, he flew on a shuttle mission uh, several years ago. I won't try to guess how many years ago. But he also was a long duration crew member. So he was, he was our man to, to uh, blend our crew with the space station crew members. And no one can do it better than John. And on top of that, John was also the, uh, our lead space station robotic arm operator and, and he actually installed the S6 truss with the robotic arm uh, with Swanee and Ricky's guidance out, outside. Uh, one of the unsung heroes is the guy who's also in charge as the mid-deck captain, and that was John. And that is a phenomenal task, as Mr. Coates will remember, getting the, uh, the uh, orbiter configured in the first couple hours of flight from 
a rocket ship to an on-orbit spacecraft and then being in charge of the operation to, to turn that whole situation around on uh, the day before we uh, enter and, and convert it back into a, a vehicle that's ready for entry. And, and so that is a big, big task, and uh, no one seems to really give much credit to those guys, but the credit is all there on John. He was a, we could not have done that operation without John. So, John, great job. Not, not to John's left, but the, the seventh member on our patch who's not here and because he's still in space is Koichi Wakata. Koichi is... <laughs> Koichi was a, a, not only a member of the Expedition 18 crew, but a member of the STS-119 crew. And he was fabulous. He came on board. He's a... He's a Robotic arm specialist, he operated both robotic arms, uh, the shuttle robotic arm as well as the station robotic arm, did a lot of the work with John on orbit on the space station robotic arm, and it was with mixed emotions that we uh, left the space station without Koichi. He was, uh, uh, you hate to leave him go, but that's what we brought him there for, is to do work, long duration work on the space station, and uh, we can't wait to see him again, and we're going to be uh, with him every day he's on orbit, so uh, hats off to Koichi Wakata. Now to John's left is, is Sandra Magnus, who, who went up uh, back in November and along, as a long-duration crew member, and she was a, uh, uh, w you know, worked with Mike Fink up on station for a no uh, many days, 120-some days that you just uh, heard. And Sandy actually became uh, a crew member of STS-119 on that last day she was on station and, and, and crawled across the hatch for the last time and, uh, and joined us as an STS-119 crew member. I won't steal much of Stan Sandy's thunder, so I'm going to let her talk more about her, her expedition at the end. So, but uh, my thanks to Sandy for being a great crew member. In a couple days you were with us. We enjoyed having you, and we enjoyed giving you a ride home. And the, la the last crew member I want to thank is uh, Mike Fink, commander of the International Space Station right now. Mike received us as good as anyone could receive us, was well prepared to help us uh, perform three great EVAs and m made us feel like part of the family up there. And it was just great to have Mike Fink being the commander of the space station while we, when we arrived. Okay, before I pass the mic, uh, what we're going to we're going to try and address some of the, the key uh, folks who supported this mission and who are every, who are a big big part of the success of this mission. I want to start with our flight director core, led by Quatsi Alaburujo. Quatsi was just a number one. I mean, the, a great flight director. Quatsi and I were in sync from day one. Everything we asked for, Quatsi gave us, and he led that entire uh, MCC team with just unbelievable skill and leadership. And it was, uh, Mr. Coach mentioned all these iterations that we had in the last couple days uh, because of our slips. And uh, Quatsi haunted all of that and had skillfully prepared us for four different iterations from anywhere from four EVAs to one EVA. And it was w with Quatsi's leadership that we were able to do that. Uh, we had some other good, great flight directors who led the orbit teams. Our, our, uh, our uh, shuttle orbiter lead, Paul Dye, uh, just an old pro, takes everything in stride, nothing phases the guy. And our asset entry team, led by Mr. Richard Jones, who had to make some unbelievably critical decisions uh, right on the spot, particularly bringing us in yesterday. He made, all the decisions he made were right on the money, and we, we appreciate the decisions for all our flight directors. What, it was a great team. To help train our, our crew, we got to start with our training manager, who was uh, for the last about 10, uh, well, maybe a little bit more than a year, was Paula Moses. Paula is the best of the best, and she juggles our schedule with the facility schedule, with the training schedules, with all kinds of schedules, puts this whole puzzle together and gets all this training done in the right amount of time. And uh, it was with, no way we could, could have done it without Paula. And we also want to recognize the training manager we had when we started the whole flow, Alicia Simpson. And she, after a couple months, she moved on to an, another job, and that's where Paula came in. So our, 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 our thanks to both of those ladies. Once Paula and Alicia put the schedule together, then it's up to the training man or the, the training team leads to get us uh, uh, well prepared in the form of sims simulations. 
Our uh, shuttle training team lead, uh, Joaquin Andaho, put together just a phenomenal, uh, has a phenomenal core of, of instructors, and they prepared us very well.